A crisis has arisen. Unity's undercover operatives are being killed off by an unknown assailant. It seems likely that there's a traitor within the agency. Report to the War Room for a full briefing on the situation and a tactical overview of your upcoming mission. Do not be late. Following the briefing, stop by the training facility to hone your skills. Hello. Bruno, how's France? Did you collect any new bullet holes? I know how you love to be shot at. I'm teasing. I'm glad you're not damaged. Did you at least encounter an exotic temptress or two? 
Really? What was her name? What do you mean you don't remember? That's horrible. Of course, I'm famished. Are you buying? Then it's a date. Let's say Maximilian's in half an hour. Ciao. I'm not very happy, you know. It's not like I thought it would be. I never promised it would be as exhilarating as your former trade, only that it would keep you out of jail and make it easier to sleep at night. More wine. You're the first female operative Unity has ever employed. The committee is old-fashioned. They need time to get used to the idea of a woman in this line of work. I know all that, but at this rate I'll be a bloody grandmother before they give me a real assignment. You can always go back to burglary and pickpocketing if you can't live without excitement. Damn it, that's not what I'm saying. I just want to be challenged. I'm sick of wiretaps. I'm sick of eavesdropping on boring strangers who may or may not pose some trivial threat to international security because they forgot to declare a ham sandwich at Heathrow. I don't have the patience for it. It's not what I'm good at. It's never fun paying one's dues, but we all have to endure a bit of frustration and tedium now and then. Builds character. I think I've paid my bloody dues. Is that what you think? God knows I loathe sermons, but I'll tell you right now that you'll never stop paying your dues. Not ever. I'm sorry you're not happy, but you might as well get used to it. Nobody owes you a damn thing. You make it sound like I'm some spoiled child. I'm not asking to be coddled. I just want a chance to prove myself. You're right. I know it's been hard for you, but I'm confident you'll get your chance. All the petty politics in the world won't hold you back. They've done an outstanding job so far, haven't they? You see? What did I tell you? Probably just one of the committee members needing a babysitter on short notice. Ye of little faith, I'll see you there. Why don't we go together? I have an errand to attend to first. You go on ahead. Good afternoon, Miss Archer. They're expecting you in the briefing room. Agent Archer, how thoughtful of you to join us. I hope we aren't inconveniencing you too awfully with matters of international security. Not at all, Mr. Smith, but it's charming of you to mention it. It is not my ambition to be charming. Well, that's fortunate. I would advise you to watch your tongue. Well... If it isn't the inimitable Agent Lowry. Sorry I'm late, Smithy. You're looking dapper today. Spare me the disingenuous flattery, old boy. It doesn't suit you. I was being sincere. It was the one polite thing I could think to say. You're still upset with me, aren't you? I assure you, I have nothing against you personally. You've served us well for many years, but perhaps too many. I firmly believe it is in Unity's best interests that you retire from field operations and I will continue to campaign to that end until you accept an administrative position. I'm not upset with you, Smithy. I just don't like you. I do understand your concern, but just because you're too old for the field doesn't mean that I am. Until I'm declared unfit for duty, I will continue to prove it. I retired voluntarily. Of course you did. Perhaps we should dispense with the pleasantries and get down to brass tacks. Fine. Lights, please. We lost another agent this afternoon, bringing the total to seven operatives in ten days. It is our firm belief that someone is systematically eliminating our undercover agents, which leads us to believe that the clandestine operations section has been compromised. It seems we have a traitor in our midst. Do you suspect anyone? We suspect everyone. Seven operatives? That's over half the active list. Why weren't we informed sooner? You're being informed now. This situation has unfolded rather abruptly. The assassin left a lily, a regal finale to be precise, on or near the corpse of each victim. Mean anything to either of you? Volkov. Who? Dmitri Volkov. 
The regal finale is his calling card. The name's familiar. What do we know about him? He's a right bastard. Anything more specific? Just what's in his file? Born in Kamchatka in 1921. Distinguished himself as an academic prodigy and master chess player by the age of eight, by which time he'd also earned notoriety for refining various torture techniques on neighbors' pets. It seems he joined the NKVD in 37 and served as some sort of disciplinarian in a gulag near Kiev. His whereabouts during the war are unknown except for a brief mention in 43, when he was spotted by an OSS officer at Leningrad interrogating prisoners of war who would later disappear without a trace. Ah, yes. I remember this fellow. We've had dealings with him before. Sometime after the war, he emerged again, this time in the employ of Smirsch. He's personally credited with well over a thousand executions, spies and Soviet dissidents for the most part. In 61, a failed assassination attempt left him without an eye. He was shot in the face at close range by one of our finest agents. You flatter me, but I shouldn't have missed. He escaped by throwing himself off a 70-foot cliff into an icy river. It was presumed that he survived, as no body was ever recovered. In fact, rumor has it, he's currently working for an organization calling itself Harm, as Director of Executive Action. I don't have to tell you what that means. What do we know about Harm? Unfortunately, there's very little about them in our files. Well, despite the obvious risks, we still have a job to do. In this case, a very important one. Wet work. Precisely. And after this recent catastrophe, the two of you are our only available assets. To be perfectly frank, Agent Archer, you're only getting this assignment because we've no other choice. Matters of such delicacy aren't really the sort of thing we would usually entrust to a woman. Emotional inconstancy and assassination do not make especially good bedfellows, if you take my meaning. Implicitly. But you shouldn't be ashamed. Administration is a perfectly noble career. I don't think I like your tone. I believe what Agent Archer means to say, Smithy, is that she appreciates the chance, however fortuitous, to demonstrate her abilities as an operative, and that she'll endeavor not to disappoint the committee. Isn't that so, Agent Archer? Aye. That's not what it sounded like to me. Enough of this. Time is of the essence. Stop by the toy shop before you go. They have some new gizmos you might find useful. Don't dally too long, though. Your flight leaves at 6 p.m. Where are we going? Morocco. Agent Archer, uh, what does harm stand for? I haven't figured that out yet. See if you can't find out. And be careful, both of you. We strongly advise that you go through the training course before embarking on your first mission. There are many nuances and features you may overlook otherwise. If you prefer to skip training, just head to the exit. Do you think the CT-180 will get a decent field rating? I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. Have you seen the commission form for that thing? They want everything that the TR-60 and TR-61 can do, all in one device. But, hand me that atomic...
they don't understand that Clancy's team was killing themselves. Welcome to Basic Field Tactics. This course comprises several areas, each with its own lesson. You must complete each lesson in order to proceed. Now step up to the active station designated by the flashing light. Your crosshair will change to indicate an item that can be activated. All right, now open the door to the next area. Bystanders will often speak to you if you activate them. Well done. All right, now open the door to the next area. If you want to skip a cutscene, simply press the space bar. Congratulations. You've completed the basic field tactics course. You should now continue to the advanced field tactics area, where you will receive specific instruction for your upcoming mission. Note that new simulations will be prepared for you before each mission. Welcome to advanced field tactics. Keep an eye out for ammunition boxes. Each can contain various ammunition types. Once the box is empty, it will disappear. You won't have the opportunity to heal while on a mission, so you'll need to rely on body armor to protect yourself from damage. Be warned that certain types of damage will ignore armor completely though, such as that sustained from falling or running out of oxygen. All right, now open the door to the next area. While on a mission, always keep an eye out for miscellaneous intelligence items that might be of benefit to us. Here are some of the items you should look for. The more you recover, the better your mission rating will be. All right, now open the door so that you may occasionally be called upon to arm or disarm explosive devices. Simply activate the device to enable or disable it as necessary. Disarm these mock explosives in order to proceed. All right, now open the door to the next area. Often advisable to move as quietly as possible to avoid detection. The faster you move, the louder your footsteps will be. It is therefore advisable to walk or move in a crouch when you're trying to be discreet. Well done! The volume of your footsteps can be modified by the material upon which you're moving. Be careful of tile, metal, and other hard surfaces. Whenever possible, vapor carpet or turf. All right, now open the door to the next area. Try again. Step behind the yellow line to reset the simulation. Wow, you're pretty light-footed. If you're not sure what to expect around a corner, it is generally safe to step out for a moment to see what's up ahead. As long as you duck back quickly, you probably won't be spotted. Of course, the closer you are to an enemy, the more likely it is that you'll be seen, so listen for footsteps or conversation before leaving cover. Can't you do any better than that? Step behind the yellow line to reset the simulation. Next course. Use your flashlight to find your way to the door. Your flashlight is an effective tool, but it can also give away your position. Try not to let enemies see the beam.
to run you through a basic firearms or fresher course. The Hampton Carbine is the world's only truly silent firearm. Of course, silence is a relative term when it comes to guns, but the Hampton Carbine is little more than a stifled cough. It fires a 45 caliber automatic Colt pistol cartridge, making it less lethal than most rifles, but it compensates in subtlety what it lacks in punch.
Let's talk about your barrette. In its default mode, it can be used as a lockpick, ideal for bypassing certain keyed padlocks. Of course, the more complicated the mechanism, the longer it will take to pick. Note that the barrette only works on padlocks with keyholes. hitting the next function key. When you slash an adversary, the pressure on the blade releases a small amount of toxin into his bloodstream. Quite deadly. Got to lay off the whiskey, I suppose. A judicious agent doesn't leave corpses lying about as they tend to arouse suspicion. Judging by your slight frame, you won't have much luck hauling bodies away, so we've come up with this special body removing powder just for you. Sprinkle a bit of it on dead tissue and voila! The cadaver will vaporize all the Ready to... Well, have a safe mission and come back in one piece. Intelligence has discovered that the American ambassador to West Germany, Morris Monroe, is marked for execution by an organization calling itself H-A-R-M, or HARM. The assassination attempt is expected to come on the last day of Monroe's upcoming holiday in Morocco as he is leaving his hotel. There will likely be multiple assailants. It is imperative that Monroe survive the attack. 
Be warned, though, that the Ambassador is extremely nearsighted and almost deaf, so you won't be able to rely on him to realize that he is in danger. You will be positioned in a residential building across the street from the hotel. Your job is to pick off the assassins before they liquidate Monroe.